Today I'm looking at a BMW with an ABS fault. I'm using my voltmeter. Got the ignition switched on, and behind here I'm double T pinned, which is a not a good suggestion, but I have made sure that there's no way they can touch. Right there in the ABS sensor. Is the other end of the ABS sensor. Now this type isn't the type that works by a magnet going past, it's like the wheel inside here. If I could show you that. Just trying to get the light in there. Yeah, it's kind of like a ladder that's wrapped around. But what I'm looking at here is this one when I hold this. Not the magnetic type, so it's not going to change by a magnet going past because it's metal on the wheel, right? This isn't going to change it. It's not magnetic. It's metal on this one. So by using the, the brake disc itself or something else, you should see a change up there. Basically no change. I'll go to the other side and do the same test again. See what we get on that side. So that looks like it's a faulty sensor. Like I say, the, some of them you can do the same test with the magnet near it. This is using the own, your own car, with the ignition arm, and a multimeter to do the test. I'll go to the other side and see what I get there. The other side of the car, exactly the same. Double T pinned, making sure they can't touch each other. Actually using the alligator clamps, the way I've put them on. So it holds them apart. Here's the sensor. This one hasn't got telltale signs of wearing out. I hold this up to the desk, right here. You can see the volts change. The top. See there? 11.1, move it away. 11.4, closer again, 11.1. .1. So, just put, all I'm doing is using the disc, but I could use a hammer or anything. Giving it a sweep and seeing for a change at the back. It's not easy because it's kind of magnetic, but this way we know the car's wiring's okay and one of the sensors is okay. Okay, this is after cleaning it up and putting in a new sensor, and this is a lot like before, double T-pin at the sensor. And I'm going to turn the screwdriver very slowly, and we can see it change as I do it. Now you can use an oscilloscope and look for dropouts. So this is just showing you a way if you don't have an oscilloscope. Like you say, some of these use a magnet. But we've kind of gone past testing the sensor now, we're just using the car's actual um, ring that's on the drive shaft. By turning this nice and slow. It's trying to keep a steady speed whilst I'm doing this. There, you know. I've got to watch it constantly changing. I'm just going to go very slowly. See what happens to the 11.4, 11.1, 11.4, 11.1. Nice and slow. If you go too quick, it won't keep up. Just a way of showing you how to do it with a multimeter if you want to check your own EPS. Thanks for watching. I hope it's helped somebody.